There are a literal ton of art space distros out there, and many of them are good, many of them are bad. Really, it all depends on why they were created and what they're trying to do. And honestly, I don't particularly care whether or not your distribution has a purpose for existing, because a lot of art space distros and Debian based distros weren't created with the idea that they're going to be the next big thing. They were simply created for the developer's use and they were just being shared publicly. Every once in a while, however, there is a distribution that comes along that tries to do something new, even if it is based on a larger brand distro. So today we're going to be taking a look at a distribution called Crystal Linux. And this is an Arch-based distro, so when I heard about it, I was like, oh man, another Arch-based distro? I'm probably not going to look at it because I've taken a look at it so many. But then I saw what they were trying to do and the fact that they're trying to do something in a different way. So today we're going to take a look at it and see just what it is they're trying to do differently. So... Right off the bat, you're going to see something that you've never seen before, and that is because they have their own custom installer. Now, there's a part of me that thinks, you know what, why do we need another installer? We really don't need another one. Calamari's is really good. Why do you need to spend all the effort to create something new? There's a part of me that thinks that and, and would probably argue that in any other situation. However... This is a very good installer, and the fact that it's still in beta doesn't bother me at all because it's actually really well done. So let's go ahead and go through this and let me show you why I like it so much. So f the step-by-step -step nature of it is similar to pretty much all other installers. So there's nothing truly unique here when it comes to the progression of your installation, at least not really. But the overall package of how it looks, how it feels, is a very nice departure away from the traditional Calamari's installer, which is the installer that the vast majority of Arch-based distros actually use. So let's go ahead and hit the start button here. And as you can see, there are some animations. Now, the animations are not smooth, and that's because I'm in a VM here. But I'm assuming that if you were to do this on hardware, the animations would be nice, nice and smooth. So you can search for your time zone here. And then I'll select that and do next. Now, interestingly, you can't search for your keyboard layout. You actually have to do the scrolling for that. So we we'll scroll all the way down to the United States of America. And then you can select the drop down here and choose between several different versions of US keyboards. So I'm just going to hit normal and hit next. And then we're going to create our user. So Matt is a good username, a very strong and secure password, and then We'll leave these two checkboxes on here. So we have root access and a pseudo access for this user. We'll hit next. And then here's where it's something that is kind of broken. At least it was for me. Now, I've already installed this once. And I had no clue what Onyx was. But I assumed that it was this highly customized version of GNOME. Because what we're using right now in the live environment is GNOME. Even though it looks... A little bit like Budgie in some places, but it's definitely GNOME with a whole bunch of extensions. So I'm assuming that's what they call Onyx. So I selected Onyx and then proceeded with the installation. But I ended up with just vanilla GNOME. So I was very confused by that, and I will see if it happens again. It's possible that this is a VM issue. It's also possible it's just because this is definitely in beta. They warn you on their GitHub page that this is a very early version of this distro, so you're to expect bugs. It's not meant to be stable whatsoever. So I'm not blaming anybody here. It's just possible that something has gone wrong. But they do offer several other desktop environments and window managers. So they have GNOME, Plasma, Budgie, Mate, Cinnamon, LXQT, Sway, i3Gaps, Herps Luff WM, Awesome WM, and BSPWM. The fact that they offer window managers is just... I mean, seriously, this is a brand new... Brand spanking new distribution. Like, it's only been around for just a little while. And they're doing a lot of stuff here from scratch, specifically with the installer. And the fact that they offer you the, the ability to install a whole bunch of different window managers and desktop environments out of the box is very nice. It's very ambitious, too, but it's also very nice. So I'm happy to see that. I'm going to go ahead and leave the Onyx selection here just because I want to see at the end of the day if I get this highly customized version of GNOME. The thing is, when I installed it earlier, all the extensions for this stuff was, were, was there in the extensions manager, but none of them were enabled. So I'm not sure, again, what was going on there. So we're going to go ahead and next. Now we can enter our host name. So we'll write 
crystal VM here. It gives you the opportunity to enable IPv6 loopback. The time shift and ZRAMD are both selected by default. That means that this is going to be using ButterFS as far as I'm aware. I'm assuming that's the reason why they use time shift. It's possible they could just be downloading that and then using the RSync version of time shift. So we'll have to check that later. We'll go ahead next. And it's going to allow you to select from automatic partitioning or manual partitioning. And they do have built in manual partitioning. So you can create your partitions right here within this awesome installer, which again is fully custom. This is not something that I've ever seen before. And it does give you options to open Gparted or open a terminal. So you could use something like FDisk or CFDisk if you wanted to do that. But there's also a graphical way of manually partitioning. So if you wanted to create your own home partition or separate home partition or your own swap or whatever you wanted to do, you could do that. I'm going to go ahead and hit back and then forward again and then go back. To, actually, I could just hit automatic partitioning there and I'll hit next and it's going to confirm all the stuff now here's the best part of this installer bar none for me every single installer that I've ever used for Linux has this summary page right and I think everyone's seen this and usually people just skip over this they don't even bother going through and I mean they might look and make sure you're writing to the right hard drive but they don't check any of the other stuff but if you do do that which you should because you want to make sure that you've chosen the right language and all that stuff if you've made a mistake you have to back 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 to that step and then do the edit Editing. In this here, you can edit it right from here. So you, it will take you back to that particular step by hitting that little pen button, and then you can select whatever you need to, and then you can go back through the installer. Unfortunately, it does take you all the way back through the installer. You have to do one right after another, but it's not that big of a deal. You just hit next until you're done. It would be cool if there was a way, once you've gone back to edit that one thing, if you could go right directly back to the summary. I'm not sure if you could do one of these buttons. Like these aren't actually buttons, so no, that doesn't work. But that would be cool if that was possible. So maybe that's something that they could add, add later on. But other than that, I love the fact that it gives you these basically shortcuts back to these settings so you could edit them if you want to. Alternatively, what would be neat is if they just, when you hit this button, if it just kind of expanded down, left you on this page, let you do the editing, and then you could hit done or something. That'd take a lot of extra effort, obviously, but it would be in addition to this feature that'd make it even more awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next, and then it's going to install Crystal. Now, the thing is, this took me probably about 10 minutes last time when I was installing this in when I installed this in the VM last time. So it definitely is not the fastest install ever. Again, it's on a VM, so that's possible the reason why that's happening. Also, they give you all this information on what it's doing, but it doesn't keep scrolled to the bottom. So it just kind of stays up here at the top. And if you want to see what it's actually doing right, right this second, you have to scroll down and then it will stay at the bottom. Personally, I could take this information part here, take it or leave it, really. It's not anything that I really need to see but i understand as a situation where this is a brand new type of thing maybe being able to see where an error might pop up might be beneficial for not only the user but for the developer as well so i'm going to cut the video here we'll come back and look at crystal when it's all done okay now that that's done that didn't take nearly as long as the first time i installed it so perhaps I just was having problems beforehand, or it's also possible I didn't give it as much memory as I did this time, so that's a possibility. So I'm going to go ahead and hit reboot here, hit re restart, and then we'll wait for it to reboot. It won't take very long. It does have its own custom grub screen there, as you saw, which is nice. One of the things that they've done a really good job of is that you're not going to see any Arch Linux logos here, so a lot of Arch-based distros forget some things when they like for neofetch they'll have it just say arch linux or something like that which is fine if they're just aiming to have you install arch linux but a lot of distributions claim to be custom and then forget to change the logo sometimes so it's nice that crystal has done a good job of not forgetting to change those logos everywhere so let's see here yeah as you see this is just vanilla gnome i'm not exactly sure what that onyx thing is then Either it's supposed to be Vanilla Gnome and this is what it's supposed to look like or something has gone wrong. I'm not actually sure because if we type in extensions here, the extensions manager is here. Now, it's not the extensions manager that allows you to install things, which is a little bit disappointing. But it does show that there are a ton of extensions here already installed, but none of them are enabled. So I'm assuming that they're supposed to be enabled. They're just not yet for some reason. So that is definitely something that is 
hopefully be fixed in the future. Other than that, there's not a lot to take a look at here because this is, again, a very brand new distro, but I will show you some things. So first, let me show you the terminal and we'll look, take a look at the NeoFetch. So if we type in NeoFetch, again, this is based on Arch, so none of these version numbers should be for all that surprising. You're going to get the latest version of the kernel. It has bash 5.1.16. This is running GNOME 42.4. It has Adawaita as the default theme. This is GNOME Terminal. There's not much that's surprising here. Again, they've done a good job of making sure that this says this is Crystal Linux, not Arch Linux, and it does have a custom ASCII art there, which is also very nice, right? In terms of installed applications, there's not much here. So you get the extensions manager. There's some Qt stuff here for development. There's the settings panel. There's Vim installed by default, which is just, I mean, seriously, guys, that's the best part about this whole distro. It's amazing. You install Vim by default, you have my heart. Because for whatever reason, the vast majority of distributions do not install Vim by default. And I don't understand why. I mean, they, they installed Nano. Nano comes with most Linux distributions, and I suppose that's fine if you use Nano, but I like Vim. I want Vim to be... Uh, stop, Matt. Stop. You don't need to go on this rant again. Okay, but anyways, other than that, they have Gedit, Calculator, uh, a few GNOME maps, so things like Weather, Clocks, things like that. Now, I don't see, like, GNOME maps here, so they haven't included every single GNOME application, unless I'm missing something, which I don't think I am. That's literally all there is in terms of actually installed software so you're not getting a very bloat there's actually more extent gnome extensions installed than there are actual applications which is highly unusual so this is definitely a work in progress distro but also if this is the way they're kind of going to aim for when they're more fully released i would say that this is a very minimal distribution which is actually quite nice so you're going to find you install this thing and then you kind of build it up yourself which is kind of the arch ethos but obviously easier to install than arch so other than that there's not much here to take a look at this is crystal linux you can kind of tell that this is still a brand new work in progress distribution so there are some things that they're obviously still working on things like getting the desktop set up like you'd probably want things like that but other than that it's a nice start i love that installer i think it is fantastic now maybe that's just because i like new shiny things it's possible that that's the reason why i like it so much but the thing is is that despite the fact that like i said at the beginning i don't really think we need another brand new installer i like the fact that developers are putting effort into something that enthuses them right you can tell from the polish of that installer that they have put a lot of effort into making it really good and i liked that about it it makes me very enthused for the future of the distro when they've put that level of effort into making something like that good at this point in its development if they can put that effort into creating some other tools that perhaps you know install extra software or allow you to tweak the system in certain ways that'd be really cool so if they like i said if they put that amount of effort into the installer It'll be interesting to see what they do in the future to make the rest of the distribution kind of stand out. So that is a very brief look at Crystal Linux. If you have thoughts on this distribution, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description along with all my other social media stuff. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all just amazing, amazing people. So thank you so very much for your support. I can't even begin to say how grateful I am. Without you, the channel just would not be where it is right now. So thank you so very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.